Welcome back to History for Today and my first chapter of U.S. History 2. Before I move on to farmers, I want to talk briefly about immigration and race. Americans celebrated in 1886 when President Grover Cleveland dedicated the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor. A million people attended New York City's first ticker tape parade, and Cleveland promised that the statue's stream of light shall pierce the darkness of ignorance and man's oppression until liberty enlightens the world. The famous poem written by Emma Lazarus to raise funds for the statue's construction had called to the world to give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. But not everybody was equally excited. The Cleveland Gazette, a black newspaper in Ohio, argued that the torch should not be lit at all until, in its words, the liberty of this country is such to make it possible for an inoffensive and industrious colored man to earn a respectable living for himself and family without being Ku Kluxed, perhaps murdered, his daughter and wife outraged, and his property destroyed. Throughout most of the South, Jim Crow laws and racist policies prevented African Americans from participating in society equally. In spite of constitutional amendments guaranteeing their citizenship and their right to vote. In 1896, the U.S. Supreme Court supported a policy of separate but equal in the landmark case Plessy versus Ferguson. Although black leaders like Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois differed on the best approach to raise their communities to a more equal status, both agreed that the ideas of white supremacy had not ended at the end of Reconstruction. The statue's dedication also didn't signal the end to Jim Crow policies and black codes that enforced segregation and victimized African Americans nor did the statue signal a new era of open immigration. Just a few years before, Congress had passed the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, which was the first American law preventing all members of a specific ethnic or national group from immigrating to the United States. Thousands of Chinese men had been recruited to build America's transcontinental railroad, and Chinese people continued to work in mining and other low-paying, often dangerous jobs. By 1880, over 200,000 Chinese immigrants lived in the United States, mainly in the West. After the Exclusion Act, several Western mining communities, where the whites blamed Chinese workers for the lack of jobs, took the law into their own hands. Massacres of Chinese people in Rock Springs and in Hell's Canyon, Wyoming, in 1885 and 1887 resulted in 28 deaths in Rock Springs and 34 deaths in Hell's Canyon. The exclusion, which was originally intended to last only 10 years, was renewed in 1892, and then it was made permanent in 1902. The legal exclusion of immigrants based on race continued until the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965. So next we will talk about farmers, but before we go, a few questions to think about. First, why were some Americans less excited about the dedication of the Statue of Liberty? Secondly, what were some of the reasons that African Americans and immigrants were mistreated? And finally, when did the unjust treatment of blacks and Chinese people actually end?